Hello, programmers, and welcome to your first programming assignment in the class. You will be given a program to type in and then make it work. The discussion in this video gives a detailed description of the inner workings of the Paycheck program. It is not necessary for you to understand everything here. We will cover many of the details of C and C++ later and at a much slower pace. I'm giving the details of this program now for two reasons. One, so that you will see why things are done the way they are. And two, when later we have a dedicated presentation of individual pieces of this program, you can say to yourself, now I understand what he was talking about in the Paycheck Program. The Paycheck Program is presented in three parts. Part one is this video. Because C and C++ are related and very similar for many parts of the languages, the discussion covers both languages. I will identify anything that is different. You can choose to do the project either in C or C++ or both, but you will only get credit for one project submission. Part 2 has the instructions on completing the lab project. Part 3, complete and submit the lab report. This first project is to compute a paycheck. Watch the video carefully. It not only covers the first project, but many of the small details. You may want to watch this video more than one time, especially if this is your first class in programming. A PowerPoint presentation of the slides and script for the video is also available. As the class progresses, you will be required to start a project from scratch and create the entire project yourself. After you have created the program, you need to make it work, test it using at least three different values, then complete and submit the lab report. Before you even start, I suggest that you create several folders on your computer or storage device main folder for the CIS 54C slash C++ programming class. Keep a copy of the syllabus here. One subfolder to keep copies of all your lab reports. You may want another folder to keep copies of the class presentations. The college removes the Canvas web page about a month after the end of the class. I am giving you all of the code both in C and C++ for this project. All you need to do is to type it in and make it work. Here is the definition for the Paycheck Project. Create a program using C or C++ that does the following. Read the employee name, number of hours worked, and pay rate from the keyboard. Separate the number of hours entered into regular hours, which are less than or equal to 40, and overtime hours, which are anything over 40. Compute the pay for the regular hours. Compute the pay for the overtime hours at time and a half. Compute the gross pay, which is the regular hours plus overtime pay. Compute the taxes and net pay. Display employee name, gross pay, taxes, and net pay. The first thing you should do when you get a programming project is to identify the inputs, the outputs, and then the processing needed to go from the inputs to the outputs. The inputs to the program are from the keyboard. They are employee name, hours, and pay rate. The outputs are to be displayed on the monitor. They are gross pay, taxes, and net pay. Once we know the inputs and outputs, then we need to figure out the computations needed to get from the inputs to the outputs. We should also get an idea of what we want the screen to look like when the program runs. Draw it out on paper. As the project progresses, don't worry if the actual program output does not look exactly like your original plan. Plans can change. Here is a sample of running the program with 41 hours at $20 per hour. Since there are 41 hours, 40 hours are paid at regular pay of $20 per hour, and there is one hour of overtime paid at $30 per hour because overtime is paid at time and a half. That makes the gross pay equal to $830. Taxes are computed at $116.20, which gives a net pay of $713.80. When we start writing the actual program, legal names need to be used for our variables and constants. 
make variable names so that they make sense both to you and anyone who might be reading the program later. The only legal characters for names are capital A through Z, small a through Z, the digits 0 through 9, and the underscore character. Names you create can't start with digits 0 through 9 and should not start with the underscore. Multiple English words can be combined together to form a variable name. To make it easier to see the individual words that make up a variable name, use either camel case or snake case. I am using camel case here. The first letter in the variable name is lower case. Each English word that follows in the variable name is capitalized. For example, the English regular hours becomes reg hours starting with a small r and ours starts with the capital H. I am giving you all of the code for the paycheck program including legal variable names. The names I have chosen are hours, pay rate, reg hours, overtime hours, reg pay, overtime pay, and gross pay. If you want to experiment you can choose different but meaningful names for each variable. For example, you could use regular hours instead of reg hours. You don't need to use the exact same names that I used, but whatever name you choose, it must be used consistently throughout the program. Overtime gets paid at time and a half. Since there is a different pay rate for regular hours and overtime hours, it is necessary to separate the number of hours worked into reg hours and overtime hours. Here are three examples, including overtime for anything over 40 hours. If people work 35 hours, then there's no overtime. If people work 40 hours, still there's no overtime. However, if people work 45 hours, then the pay is computed at the pay rate for the first 40 hours. But the program needs to make a separate computation for the five hours of overtime. Pseudo code is fake code. Its code is not really in any programming language. It's more in English. A lot of times, pseudocode is given to the programmer to say, here's how I want the program to work. And it's up to the programmer to write the code in C, C++, Java, or whatever language is being used. In this hierarchy input process output chart, also called a hypo chart, we want to define the inputs, in this case it's employee name, hours, and pay rate, and the outputs, gross pay, taxes, and net pay. Once we know the inputs and outputs, we then need to decide how to get from input all the way to the output. We read the employee name, hours, and pay rate from the keyboard, determine the number of regular hours, determine the number of overtime hours, compute the gross pay, taxes, and net pay. Gross pay is the amount before any deductions. Net pay is what you receive after all the deductions. Finally, display the employee name, gross pay, taxes, and net pay. This chart shows the sequence of events that occur as the program executes with an input for hours at 41 and the input for pay rate at 20. Since 41 hours were input, the hours are separated into regular hours equal to 40 and overtime hours at 1. Once we have separated the hours, we can compute the pay for each category. Regular pay is equal to 800, which is 40 times 20. Overtime pay is $30 per hour because there is one hour times the pay rate times 1.5 to get time and a half. The regular pay and overtime pay are added together to get the gross pay. Taxes are computed as the gross pay times the tax rate. Net pay is everything that is left over after taxes. Therefore, the net pay is equal to gross pay minus taxes. Finally, display the employee name, gross pay, taxes, and net pay. In your mind, keep the program organized to input, process, output. I'm going to use flowcharts to continuously break the program into smaller manageable parts. Flowcharts are used to represent different steps of a program. The most commonly used symbols are those in the left column. 
A circle or rounded rectangle is used to indicate the beginning or end. The parallelogram is used for input or output. The rectangle represents some type of process and the diamond is used to represent a decision. Other symbols can be used to represent subroutines, functions, disks, databases, etc. The concept of structured programs states that all programs can be created with only three constructs, sequence, selection, and repetition, or a combination of any of them. Sequence is the easiest to understand. Program steps are executed sequentially, one after another. Many times the order in which steps are executed is very important. Other times, it does not matter. For example, if I were baking a cake, it may not matter whether I put the egg in the bowl and then the flour, or I reverse the two before mixing them with water. However, it would make a lot of difference if I put the cake batter in a 9 by 13 baking dish and placed it in the oven for an hour and 30 minutes, took it out, and then turned the oven on to 350 degrees. Yuck. This simplified flowchart shows the sequence of steps required for the program. There are no loops, so the repetition structure is not needed. We can expand the Compute Paycheck box to show a lot more detail. Here, I have expanded the flowchart to show more detail when computing the paycheck. The center column uses a diamond to represent a decision. The program needs to look at all the hours worked to see if they are less or equal to 40. In this case, the reg hours are set to the number of hours worked, and the overtime hours are set to zero. However, if the test condition is not true, that the hours are less than or equal to 40, that means that there is some overtime. Therefore, we set the regular hours to 40 and set the overtime hours to anything over 40. We can then proceed to compute the regular pay, the overtime pay, and gross pay taxes, and net pay. Then display gross pay, taxes, and net pay. Program organization. Most of the programs you write will be organized like this. Use comments to place a title block at the top of each file. The title block identifies what this part of the program does as well as the date, version, and programmer's name. It can be very frustrating later on when there are many files that make up one program and you look at a file that contains code and have no idea what the code does. Then you have to reanalyze or reverse engineer the code instead of just looking at a short description in the title block. Many companies want the programmers to place their name in the file in case anybody has a question about the file. The date and version number also help identify the latest version of the program. The first part of the real code contains the pound include statements and any global variables and constants. Next is the main body of the program with its four subsections, list of variables, input, process, output. Next, convert the algorithm into code. The C and C++ programs are very similar. All of the logic for determining regular hours, overtime hours, the regular pay, overtime pay, gross pay, taxes, and net pay. This is exactly the same for both languages. The big difference at this point is just the input and output statements. I have placed square boxes where there is a difference in the C and C++ code. The first one is for the include files. There is a slight difference between the C and C++ include files. Include files help the compiler build the program. The second one is for inputting data, the hours work, and pay rate. The last box is for the output. Is a programming language really a language? It isn't a spoken language, but neither is ASL, American Sign Language. If I was writing an English essay, I would construct it using sentences and paragraphs. I would separate paragraphs by either indenting the first word or placing a blank line between paragraphs. A typical sentence would have a subject, verb, and object. Each statement in the program is like a sentence in English. If I have a statement x equal square root of 25, I could express it in English 
as compute the square root of 25 and store it in the variable named x. This is a compound English statement. Verbs are compute and store. The subject of the verb compute is the number 25. The second part of the statement, stored in the variable named x, has an implied subject based on the result of the square root computation. The object is the variable x. Sentences in English are ended with a period, but the period character is already used in C and C++ as a decimal point for numbers. So the creators of C chose to use a semicolon to end a statement. This slide shows the program written in both C and C++. If the text is too small, don't worry about reading it yet. I will zoom in for different parts during the discussion. The title block at the top of the program uses the C language style comments starting with a slash star and ending with a star slash. The pound include statements bring in additional code that helps the compiler build the program. Look carefully. There is no semicolon at the end of the pound include statement. The C language needs pound include open angle bracket sddio dot h close angle bracket to correctly compile the scanf and printf statements used for input and output. It is proper to pronounce stdio.h either by its letters stdio.h or call it standardio.h but not studio.h. There is no U in stdio.h and this has nothing to do with a rock and roll recording studio. Look at the C style comments slash star and a bunch of stuff star slash. They are used for creating a block of comments. Everything between the slash star and the star slash is considered a comment and is ignored when the program is compiled from C or C++ into machine code. This style can be used in both C and C++ programs. C++ style comments start with a double slash 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 and stop at the end of the line. You need to include the comments to receive full credit for the assignment. The pound define statement is a preprocessor directive used in C to define constants. It causes a text replacement while the program is being compiled. This would be similar to the find and replace feature in a word processor. Anywhere that the characters over time underscore rate appear in the program, they would be replaced with the characters 1.5. Because the pound define is text replacement, it is important that neither the equal sign nor the semicolon character are used in the pound define statement. Otherwise, those extra characters would also be added into the program before it is compiled. Although not required in C or C++, it is common practice to use all uppercase characters and the underscore when defining constants. This helps make it easier to recognize when looking at code later. I expect you to use only uppercase characters and the underscore when declaring and using constants in your lab projects. Now, look at the C++ version of the program. You will probably see the pound include open angle bracket IO stream close angle bracket statement in many of the C++ programs. The IO stream library is provided by the compiler manufacturers to give access to the console devices, keyboard, and display. We also will use pound include open angle bracket IO manip close angle bracket in this program because we want to display the gross pay, taxes, and net pay with two digits past the decimal. Using namespace std semicolon makes it easier when writing the console input and output statements. The const keyword is used in C++ to prevent the defined value from being changed when the program is executed. Const double overtime underscore rate equal 1.5 semicolon. Instead of a text replacement, we are actually creating data with its associated data type and using the equal sign to assign it a value. The semicolon is used at the end of the assignment statement. 
We now have the value of 1.5 stored in memory and it has the data type of double. Console applications start with int main. The curly braces are used to identify the start and end of a block of code or data. Many other programming languages use the words begin and end instead of curly braces. I suspect that the original developers of the C language did not like to do a lot of typing and thought. Wow, I wonder what I can use this character for. Several characters always occur in pairs. Examples are the parentheses, curly braces, double quotes, single quotes, square brackets, and angle brackets when not used as arithmetic compare operators for less than or greater than. Most context-sensitive editors used for writing programs will identify the mating character of a pair when you select one of the characters. This can be handy when looking at code. This program is using the double data type for variables. The double data type is most often used to hold floating point numbers. Double means double precision floating point number. Variables can be declared individually, one per line, or multiple variables of the same data type can be declared on the same line. Some companies require each variable on its own line. If you do place more than one variable on a line, they should at least be related to each other. When writing a console application, it is necessary to output a prompt message to the screen so that the user knows that data is being requested. The prompt message should give the user an idea of what type of data to be entered, such as text or numbers. If you don't have a prompt message, all the user will see is a flashing cursor, won't know what to do, and will probably think the program crashed. C programs use the printf statement, and C++ programs use the cout statement to display the prompt message. In this example, an array large enough to hold 100 characters is declared as char name open square bracket 100 close square bracket semicolon. When inputting into an array, it is important that the array not be overflowed with too much data. The C program is using F gets open parentheses name comma size of open parentheses name close parentheses comma stdin close parentheses semicolon to read up to 100 characters from the keyboard into the character array name. stdin refers to the standard input device, which by default is the console keyboard. We could have also written this command as f gets open parentheses name comma 100 comma stdin close parentheses semicolon. The advantage of using size of open parentheses name close parentheses instead of 100 is that if we change the size of the array, the f get command is automatically updated. The C++ program also limits the number of characters being read from the keyboard. cn.getLine, open parentheses, name, comma, 100, close parentheses, semicolon. When writing a prompt message, I like to end the prompt with a colon and a space. The space after the colon is to make the screen look nice so that when the user types something, it won't be smashed right next to the prompt. C programs use printf to output to the console screen and either scanf or scanf underscore s to read from the console keyboard. C++ programs use cout to output to the console screen and cn to read from the console keyboard. Similar code is used to input the hourly pay rate. The scanf statement in a C program is a little complicated to understand. The first thing to notice is that I'm using scanf underscore s instead of just plain scanf. The plain scanf has been deprecated, which means that it is old and out of date, but still used by many versions of C, including Apple's Xcode. 
The original scanf could cause problems when reading a string of text characters if someone typed more characters than scanf was expecting. This could cause a buffer to overflow, resulting in the program to crash or provide a way for evil people to insert a virus. Microsoft has updated their version of scanf and called it scanf underscore s. The underscore s means secure. Apple has updated their version of scanf but still calls it scanf. If you get an error with scanf underscore s, try using scanf instead. If you want to sound like a cool programmer is in the know, watch how you pronounce these names. Scanf, parentf, cn, cout. Scanf is short for formatted input scan. Printf is short for formatted print. C++ uses CN and Cout for inputting and outputting to the console. If you pronounce CIN as SIN, people might think you are trying to lead a church congregation instead of writing a C++ program. Cout is pronounced as Cout, not Cout. <coughs> The first parameter in a call to scanf is the format string. It is surrounded by double quotes. The format string tells scanf what type of data is expected to be typed at the console. The paycheck program is using quote percent lf quote in the format string because it is expecting data that may have digits past the decimal and the input data is going to be stored in a variable named hours whose data type is double. Double is also known as long float. When you are typing the program, make sure that you type lowercase letters for percent %LF using small LF and not the number 1. The number 1 and small L look almost identical in many fonts. Each part of the program likes to protect its own area in memory and its own data. It is like there is a magic barrier between scanf routine and your program that under normal circumstances can't be crossed. Since scanf needs to store data from the keyboard into your part of the program, it is necessary for your program to provide the address of your variable to scanf. For example, if the four characters 3, 7, point, 5 are entered at the keyboard and the scanf control string is percent %LF, scanf will internally convert those four characters into a floating point number 37.5. As used here, the ampersand is called the address of operator. Because your program is providing the memory address for a variable named hours inside this part of the program, scanf knows where to store the data in memory that belongs to your part of the program instead of somewhere else in memory. Just to make things confusing later, the ampersand can have different meanings depending on where it is used. We have finished the input section of the program. Now it is time for the process part of the program. We can use the values that were input to compute the actual paycheck. The first thing that needs to be done is to separate overtime hours from the hours that were input at the keyboard. The if else statements are used to determine the number of regular hours worked and the number of overtime hours. The if statement has a logical expression enclosed within the parentheses that is testing to see if the hours are less than or equal to 40. The logical expression must evaluate to either a true or a false. When the expression hours less than or equal to 40.0 evaluates to true, that means there is no overtime and the block of code attached to the if statement is executed. When the expression does not evaluate to true, the block of code attached to the if statement is skipped over and the code attached to the else statement is executed. Be careful that you do not put a space in between the less than or equal operator. I know there are spaces in English when we say less than or equal, but the two characters in less than equal form the comparison operator in C and C++. Also, 
Be very careful that you do not put a semicolon at the end of the if statement or the end of the else statement. There is no overtime if the logical expression evaluates to true, so just set the regular hours to the number of hours worked and the overtime hours to zero. When the expression isn't true, also known as false, the block of code attached to the else statement is executed. Then there is overtime. The first 40 hours get paid at the regular rate, but anything over 40 gets paid at time and a half. Set the regular hours to 40 and the overtime hours to anything over 40. This program can process a paycheck that does not have overtime, 40 hours less, also a paycheck that has overtime, more than 40 hours. It is important to test both conditions. It is also important to test the program at 40 hours. This way, we are testing the program for less than 40, equal to 40, and greater than 40. It is not necessary to test the program for every possible value that is less than 40 or every possible value that is greater than 40. The computations for the reg pay and overtime pay are fairly straightforward. Reg pay equals reg hours times pay rate, semicolon. Overtime pay equals overtime hours times pay rate times overtime underscore rate, semicolon. The overtime rate is the time and a half from the constant 1.5 at the top of the program. The gross pay is the amount before deductions or taxes are removed from the paycheck. Gross pay is the sum of reg pay and overtime pay. Taxes are computed by multiplying the gross pay by the tax rate, which was defined at the top of the program. The net pay is what is left over after taxes or other deductions have been taken out. We have finished the compute part of the program. Now it is time to output the results. The printf function is used in the C language to display information to the screen. The first parameter inside the parentheses is a format string that can contain replaceable parameters. The first printf statement displays the message paycheck for, and then the name that was entered at the keyboard when the program first started. The format string is enclosed in double quotes as, quote, backslash n paycheck space for space percent s backslash n, quote. The backslash n moved the cursor on the output to the next line. When typing backslash n, make sure that you type the backslash character and not the forward slash. The percent %s is a replaceable parameter that gets filled in with a text string placed after the end of the format string and comma, which in this case is the data stored in the name variable. When displaying numeric data that was declared using the double data type, use percent %lf as the replaceable parameter in the format string. The format string in the next printf statement is, quote, your gross pay is dollar sign percent point two LF backslash in quote. The dollar sign is just a character that gets displayed before the numeric data for gross pay. The percent point two LF tells printf to replace the percent point two LF with the data that is after the closing quotes of the format string and the comma. Commas separate the format string and each piece of data that is after the format string. The LF specifies that the data is expected to be of type double and the point two says two digits past the decimal. If pay were computed to be 803.0, then the output on the screen would show your gross pay is dollar sign eight hundred and three point zero zero and the cursor would move down one line because of the backslash in. Make a note on how printf displays two digits past the decimal. You will need this in future lab assignments for any programs written in C. If you thought that printf was a little complicated in displaying two digits past the decimal, look at how C++ does it. We need the pound include open angle bracket IO manip close angle bracket statement at the top of the file. 
We also need C out less than less than set iOS flags, open parentheses, iOS colon colon fixed, vertical bar, iOS colon colon show point, close parentheses, semicolon. The vertical bar is usually located right above the enter key on most keyboards on the same key as the backslash. Now all we have to do is set precision, open parentheses to close parentheses before displaying a double data type. Depending on which development system you are using, you may need to insert the line system, open parentheses, quote, pause, close parentheses, semicolon, right before the return zero to prevent the output window from closing immediately after the program ends and before you even have the opportunity to look at the output. This will not be necessary if you are using Xcode or NetBeans. It also won't be necessary if you use the Control plus F5 to start a Microsoft Visual Studio C++ program without debugging. This may seem like a big task for your first program, but a lot of the code is missing to make a robust program that is more user-friendly and able to detect and handle bad inputs. Here are some of the things that are missing that we will need to learn how to process in later projects. Check for negative hours or pay rate. Check for hours greater than 168. There are only 168 possible hours in a week. Check for excessive hours or pay rate. Check for illegal inputs. Congratulations on completing your first C or C++ assignment. I hope that you were not only able to complete just the lab report and submit it, but also that you gained an understanding of how this program works. Refer back to this lab assignment when working on future labs for instructions on creating a C or C++ program. Bye for now. Dandolph, signing off.